Before we get started with the paintings, let's talk about what make a cloud anime style. So the first thing is the colors. If you look at a real life photo versus a screenshot from an anime movie, you can see that the anime movie colors is a lot more vibrant and a lot more saturated. The second thing you may notice is the composition. Now nature is very beautiful, but it's not always the best for a still frame shot in terms of composition. If you look at an anime movie, it's a lot more well thought out. There's a lot of directional lines that directing our audience eye into what the author wants us to focus on. The third thing is edges. This may depend from author to author, from movies to movies, but most of the time you will see that the cloud's edge in an anime movie stick out a lot more from the sky. They use a lot more hard edges instead of soft edges like in real life or even in some of Pixar movie. Now with all that in mind, let's see how we can combine them to create our own cloud scenery. First, let's plan out what our cloud would look like. Compositional wise, I'm going to keep it simple by making the center our focal point. With that, we're going to have a big cloud in the middle and all the other cloud outside of it will be pointing toward this big cloud. I also will add some trees at the bottom. These three will be higher and taller on the side and smaller and shorter in the middle. And I'm going to make the cloud lighter in value compared to the sky and the trees. In terms of color, I'm going to keep the sky pretty simple, just a basic blue color. I'll make it slightly dark at the top and go slightly lighter as we move toward the bottom. As for the clouds, I will make some color transition from left to right will be white to orange to pink or reddish and then purple and blue. I chose this color transition because I want to put the sun on the top left side of the clouds which make that side a little bit lighter and warmer in terms of color temperature. As we move toward the right hand side, the temperature will be cooler and the color would also be darker. Now for the painting, I will be using poster color and these two brushes, a flat brush size 12 and another flat brush size 4. Starting out, I'll be using pure white color to map out the highlight area on the cloud just like how we drew it previously. I had a video on how to paint different types of clouds and how to make your cloud shape interesting. So if you want to learn more about the concept on how I designed this cloud, go check out that video. I'll put it in the tag above. After that, I add some pink to my white color and start moving on to the right hand side. And as we move further along, I'll make it a little bit more purple and bluish. What you will see me do in a lot of my paintings, including this one, is that I will go back and forth over one area adding a slightly different color each time while keeping the value the same. For example, I will add a little bit of red into my pink and going over that light pink area to make it look a little bit warmer. And later on, I will also go back to some of my purple area adding a little bit more blue and sometimes more red just to have many different color shades in one area. And I think this generally makes my painting a lot more interesting and more dynamic. One thing that we need to be aware of as we do this is that we want to keep the color temperature transition in mind. As you can see, even though I have different type of purple, the ones that are closer to the left side will have more of a warmer tone to it. So more red, more orange, more pink. As we move toward the shadow area, we want to make the color temperature cooler by adding more blue to our mixture since the warm sun light on the left hand side is not reaching these areas.
Here when I reach the bottom of the clouds, you will see me expand that blue color into the sky, making the cloud kind of blend into the sky in that section a little bit. And as I paint the sky, I'm making my brushstroke also pointing towards the cloud. So instead of making horizontal brushstroke, I'm making all my brushstroke kind of diagonally pointing toward that middle cloud, following the composition that we planned for this painting previously. Remember in our previous drawing, besides the big cloud shape on the outside, we also have many little clouds that exist within this big cloud. Those little clouds also have their own light and dark section. So what I'm doing right now is I'm adding those color transition from white to pink reddish to purple and blue on a smaller scale in each of these mini clouds. In the process, I'm also adding the shadow part on some of the clouds that are not part of these big clouds. They are kind of like separated and also a little bit in front of this cloud. And I'm keeping all of them pointing toward the middle, staying consistent with our original composition plan. After I added the sky, I also noticed that my white section has mostly been covered, so I'm going back in to reinforce them, expanding them a little bit, making the highlight area more obvious. Then I'm going to add this highlight also on the separated clouds at the bottom.
For the shadow part of the clouds at the very bottom, I'm keeping them mostly blue or a very cool purple, instead of having a combination between warm purple and cool purple like our big cloud. Okay, now let's add some more cloud at the top, again pointing toward our focal point in the middle. At this point, if you just want to paint the cloud, this is pretty much done. What I'm doing right now is I'm adding a little bit of mountain and a little bit of uh, a grass field at the bottom just to fill up all the white paper space I have allocated for this painting. I'm using a light ultramarine color for the mountain, making it slightly lighter in value compared to the sky. And for the grass field, it's going to be a very brightish green by mixing some primary blue with lemon yellow.
just like the cloud, I also want the grass field to have some shadow and highlight section. And just like the cloud, I'm going to make my shadow section on the grass field a lot cooler compared to the highlight by adding some more purple and more blue to the green mixture. Now I'm using a darker green to go in and add some trees on the field. I'm keeping the trees a little bit taller on the side and they're gonna get smaller and shorter as they move toward the middle. Since a cloud is still the main focal point and this tree is just auxiliary, you know, um, background element. I'm not going to add any details onto this tree, I'm just going to define the shadow and the light area on each of them so that when we look at the painting, our main focus will still be on the big cloud in the middle. And just like we have different shades of pink and red on the cloud, we're going to have different shades of greens on the grass field as well. For the light area, we're keeping the value pretty much the same, but I'm adding sometimes a little bit more blue, sometimes a little bit more yellow, um, just making the grass have different color in them and I'm doing the same with the shadow area adding a little bit more purple and also sometimes maybe a little bit of burnt sienna desaturating that uh, green a little bit just so that we have a lot of different shade of colors in the same area making the painting look more interesting And finally, I'm mixing a darkest mixture of blue so far in the painting and I'm using this to add in the foliage and bushes that are closest to us in the shadow. And that's our final painting. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I have a lot more painting tutorial on the channel if you want to check them out. Other than that, I will see you all next time.